Welcome along to the Half Yard Sewing Club. If you're brand new to us, or if maybe you've seen the club before and you've seen, seen these live Facebook chats and you think, well, I, I, wonder, I wonder if, I wonder if it's for me, I wonder if I'd like to have a go. We're still doing an offer where you can trial the Half Yard Sewing Club for a whole month. Because we've been going now for a whole five months, I think it is now, if you were to join now and use that free trial, you actually have access to 26 projects. Most of those, well over 20 of those, are for members only. There are also 18 pages of hints and tips and ideas for you. Um, those are added to every month. Every month you're going to get a new project with a video, with downloadable patterns and step-by-step -step instructions. Every month you'll have extra patterns. Every month you're going to have hints and tips. And every month we're going to be giving you offers and discounts wherever we can as well. So it's worth having a go. It's worth joining. Um, so, oh gosh, you're all here. Well, thank you so much for being so patient. Um, patient in Somerset from Alison and Leah. Hi, Leah and Margaret. And who else have we got? And Sue. And, uh, and hi, Melissa, as well. Thank you for joining us. Now then, this month's project for members has been Birthday Bear. And I, I think he's so cute. I had so much fun making Birthday Bear. I did have a few comments that his face is a little bit sad. So I've been having to play around with a pattern and I've made super sized birthday bear and he's got a smile on his face this time as well. Now these aren't toys. They've got too many little bits and bobs and things that you can pull off and this one's even got a fringe. If you wanted to make them as toys, you can sew an awful lot more than I've been gluing and make sure everything's nice and secure. So I'll leave that up to you. But I think as an ornament, you could even particularly on the larger bear, use um, letters and write, you know, I heart you or something like that, or shorter names would go on there quite easily. So I'm going to show you how I made the bigger pattern and we'll see how far we get as far as making them up as well. So you can sit there, there we go, and you can go down there. And Bobbin's just walked in, so... Apologies if we have barking starting any second now because we have Bobbin and we have a cat, both at the same time. So it could be fun. Okay, have we got anybody else here? Not at the moment. Oh, we have, oh, hi, Jane and Vanessa and Lisa and Jackie and Sarah. If you've got any questions, come on through them. We've got lots of members' questions from you as well. So I will be going through those throughout the course of the evening or however long we're here. Um, so, birthday bear. When you print off your pattern, it will be A4 size. So here's your birthday bear pattern. That's how it's going to print out. Um, so it says body cut to, and these little bits here are darts, so you need to cut those out as well. But to make birthday bear bigger, what I've actually done is to stick together two pieces of A3 paper. I hope you can see this okay because it's a bit bright. Then I've put birthday bear pattern right in the centre and just cut a couple of pieces of tape. Oh, missed that one. To hold it down. And then I've got my ruler and I'm going to measure a couple of inches all the way around. So just put a a couple of markings every so often just like this doesn't have to be absolutely perfect and what I did find is that on the larger one his ears have got quite big and he got a little bit fatter so it may be an idea you're going to join all of these up now like so have a look at the shape when you've drawn him because you may think actually I want his ears a little bit narrower because he does look funny with small ears and maybe I want him a little bit longer and slimmer so you can change the shape however you feel that he's going to look better but you must remember to keep the darts in so there's your dart so the dart here is going to be echoed and the sides of the dart need to be the same size so when you cut him out that's how he's going to look. So this, this is for, just move that paper out of the way. This is for fat birthday bear. Now if I wanted to make the paws a little bit bigger, 
adding two inches all the way around made them far too big because when I put them on the side of his face, so you imagine that another inch bigger, they, they just look completely out of proportion. So what I did here was to just cut an inch around the, the side and a little bit more than an inch around the top. And then his arms and his legs are both the same size. There's also his tummy to cut out. So there's the tummy bit, the nose and face. As you cut that out, it's quite a lot larger than it is on the smaller one. I'll show you that in just a second. But I'm, let me turn that over. I'm quite happy with that. So he's got a big face around here. When you do cut anything out, fold it in half when you cut to make sure it's symmetrical. And the same goes for Birthday Bear here. You can see that I've actually folded that in half so both sides are now symmetrical. So you'll do that. You'll do that. You'll cut out your arms and your legs, all the same. And then the only other little bits are the paws and the ears. But I'm going to do that afterwards. This is ever so easy. And then you can see with Birthday Bear himself here, you've got the little pads inside the paws. You've got the little bits inside the ears. The hat I've made bigger as well. That's simply two triangles. The face is a lot bigger than the little birthday bears who I seem to have lost bear with me and there's a little birthday bear so you can see the shape of his face is a lot bigger but it still looks pretty cute so you sit there and I'll get my felt bits and we'll see how far we go oh meanwhile meanwhile we've had um, a picture from Sue and Sue says morning Debbie I thought you might like to see my first block from the block of the month and she's finished it so let's have a look here um, it's the first time she's done anything like this she says I watched the video first with the instructions and uh, found it very easy to follow there you go go look uh, she says I bought the quilt bundle to make it I think Anne's got that on pre-order. I'll tell you about that later on because we sold out completely ever so quickly. Makes it really easy to follow. And she says, the fabric's beautiful to use and I look forward to the next block and that's best wishes from Sue. And while you're there next month, when you've got your second block, I'm going to give you another idea of something you can do with your first block. So with this one, I've actually quilted it randomly all zigzagsy all over the place. Look. I've given you proper mitered corners, so that isn't a strip that goes all the way across, but proper 45 degree mitered corners. And on the back, I put one of those zips in there that you can't quite see, so it's nicely hidden. So that's, <laughs> that's an extra little project for you that's gonna be coming up next month. And that's on top of all the other projects that you're going to have coming up. That squeaking wasn't my hips, by the way. That was my dog who's trying to get my attention because she's got her favourite toy with her. So let's see who else is here before we carry on. Hi Sarah and Angela and Lynn and Angie and Maggie from the east coast of Scotland and it's very cold. Managed to catch you live this time. You're lucky because we were half an hour late today. Um, oh hi Martin from the snowy Alps. Get you up there. Um, and uh, oh Creswell. Francesca, uh, hello to you and Mandela and Kathleen and Anne and Beth and hi Jean and uh, Al, oh hi Alan, how are you? Alan loves a white magnum. Um, can you make birthday bear with a storage pocket on the front? That's a good idea. You should do that on your channel. Brilliant idea. You can put your, your scissors and notions and things in there. Um, hi Linda and Beth, just started the lip clutch which is over here. That's one of the extra projects for this month. So that's just, we're just giving them away. Uh, hi to Denise and Christine and Linda and Linda and Paula and Jackie and Vanessa and Leslie. Gosh, there's loads of you here tonight. Thank you for joining us. Right, we will get some sewing done. Now I'm working with felt and I have had lots of questions about working with felt. And then we had one from Mary. Uh, we had a question from Belinda, and you're all asking um, about the best type of felt to use and why. I like natural felt purely because it feels nice to work with. Some felts are quite stiff, you know, like the craft ones that you buy in sheets. I'm not a fan. 
they they somehow I don't know they stick to your fingerprints. I'm 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 not fond. And certainly, if you are going to be making a soft toy, it's nice to have a natural fibre. Do check washing instructions, though. Not all of them will wash very well. But it just, they just feel so much softer. Um, so either um, a wool or a wool viscose. Viscose is actually a natural fibre. It sounds like it should be man-made, but it's not. It's made from the bark of trees, which makes it natural. So I'm just going to pin my pattern on here. You're going to come and say hello. <laughs> this is my son who's disappearing out of the door rather quickly, who should be used to being on TV because he works with Create and Craft and is always being called on set. But he's gone terribly shy all of a sudden. He's going. Well, come and say hello then. <laughs> <laughs> now then, with the felt, you might find it um, easier to draw around the pattern um, than just going ahead and cutting this out. So let me just move this around a little bit so you can hear me better and draw. You don't have to, you can just go in for cutting, but I, I find I'm a lot more accurate when I'm drawing. But let's save a little bit of time and just cut. So you need two pieces. So the easiest thing to do is to cut them both out at the same time. The nice thing is when you're making things like this, you don't have to be 100% accurate. I made a teddy, it's, oh, ages ago now, it was huge. Um, probably about four feet tall, I shall show you one day, I've still got it. And I didn't use a pattern, and I didn't copy one side to the other, and he's got this big long nose, and one arm's a bit longer than the other, and his body's a bit skewy, and he's lovely. I think it, it gives personality. Now, when you're cutting out as well, um, because it's felt, it doesn't fray. So to make a nice effect, you could even use pinking shears and then sew it together so you can see the stitches on the outside. It looks furry there. Okay, just cutting around here. I'll, I'll tell you what, while I'm cutting... Bear with me. I had some questions, so I'll answer those. I'll, I'll multitask and answer these as I'm talking. So, put it over there. Um, right, Karen Smith. Hello, Karen, if you're watching. She wants to know if we're going to be doing anything about assembling collars in dressmaking. She said, I'd love to make myself some blouses, but it, when it comes to putting a collar in, it never seems to work, and I have no idea why. Um, yes, we will. Um, this month we're going to start right from scratch with dressmaking, as in understanding your pattern pack. Because you've got to know what's going on on the pattern before you understand what's on the pattern package before you understand what's going on in the pattern. And then next month we'll look at pattern markings. Um, I will be doing a full bust adjustment. I've already done the the words for that. Just need to film a video. So we're going to go quite in depth into dressmaking. Um, when we've got over all of the instructions on how to and understanding your patterns, we'll get into later on in the year actually making up some patterns. And I'll try and get the actual pattern numbers so that we can we can do it together, if that's okay. Do you know what I've got? I've got my scissors that have, um, they're serrated, which are great for fine fabrics, but they tend to stick to felt. So smooth scissors work better with felt. I've just discovered tummy. this second. So we only need one tummy. And this time I'm just going to draw around it so I shan't pin. And then cut it out. There we are. Now I'm using a, a friction pen. Um, they could use chalk, doesn't really matter on this because you're not going to see it anyway. You can always put the tummy face down. Then we'll hold this in place with a little bit of spray. And I'm going to machine sew around the edge instead of blanket stitching by hand. 
but I will embroider the face on and you know I think that's probably going to be as far as we're going to get with this one so I'll finish him later I might make a birthday a, a birthday girl bear to go with my birthday boy bear so she'll need eyelashes because <laughs> that's the difference between boys and girls isn't it there we go okay so that goes on there just just checking comments while we're there hi Anne from Cheshire and Vanessa's making a Hugh the Hound with a felt with felt love working with wool felt so do I and Alan's bought his first quilting bible book wow I want to see what you're making then Alan right I'm using some 505 spray and that's just going to hold my tummy to my bear and put that in the center of one piece so we're going to put the features on now before we start sewing the bear together so that could be a little neater here okay. just that little bit needs trimming there we are I think he looks funny with little dotty eyes so I'm just going to draw little dotty eyes and those are going to be French knots so like you can see with my big one here it's just got two little dots if you wanted to you could use uh, googly eyes or sew buttons on there instead I just I just think it looks funny with little dots then we'll draw approximately down the center make a mark on that and then a triangle for the nose then his kind of lips go down here somehow like that and then a silly smile like a u-shaped smile so I'm going to blanket stitch on my sewing machine around the edge here but I'm going to hand embroider the eyes and the nose, so we'll do that now. Okay. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'm, I'm coming back, I'm coming back. Back. Um, I'll take pictures of what I'm doing after I've finished here because we will be here till 10 o'clock and you'll be really bored of me and I don't want that. Um, so I'll, I'll kind of explain what I'm doing here then I'll take pictures and I'll put it on the blog so if you want to see how it's finished then that's fine um, it's basically the same steps as the little bear but everything's supersized everything's a little bit bigger because this is such a big area if I'm going to do one stitch straight across there he's gonna have a baggy nose so I'm going to do halfway go down to the point and then embroider the other halfway so I've tied a knot in the end of my thread I'm coming up through the back and just do a satin stitch so I'm going to turn that upside down because it makes it easy with me being right handed and go into the edge of the line and then come up right underneath that stitch in fact I'm going to stagger it slightly and pull it through I've got all six strands in my embroidery thread here so it's really thick so I've got a nice thick needle and just keep following that edge now you can fill some of these lines in afterwards so if I've got got a gap here I can go over that later and okay I know it's a cheats way but if I do have any gaps there I can always go back over with a black sharpie and fill in the gaps that way and I'm making these stitches not exactly uniform because I don't want a dead straight line down the center and you know oh is that a bit better I'd probably take a little bit more time when I'm doing this myself as well just want to get something finished while we're here tonight while I'm doing that let's have a look who else is here oh Arlene says love using 505 spray 505 spray if you're not aware is a repositionable spray fabric adhesive so without sewing this bit down I'd normally be pinning um, but with the 505 spray it sticks everything together it's great for applique 
um, but I can still move everything around. It's not like a permanent glue. So yeah, I'll get through loads of it. Now this is what happens when I'm reading and talking at the same time, you see, because I've got lots of big gaps there. So let's go back up in the opposite direction and see if we can fill some in. Um, Leah, oh, now you've gone. Now you're back. There you are. What do you say? Oh, black screen. Yeah, sorry about that. Entirely my fault. I pulled the plug. Um, Darlene, hiya, Jean. Oh, Jean says you could put a triangle of felt on there. Yes, you could. Good you? That would probably have been a lot easier. And I, I would probably have finished it by now, Jean. So there you see me and the big ideas. It's easy on the smaller ones, but maybe for the bigger ones, black felt would have been a better option. But I've got to, I've got to finish now. I've started, haven't I? We have to, we have to get there. Actually, I quite enjoy doing this, to be honest. But there will be a few gaps, so that's fine. That's fine. I'll fill those in later. You can see on my blog when I get to filling it in. So, Alan again. Oh, hi, Alan. Uh, he's doing a mouse doorstop with 505 spray. Marie in Lincolnshire. Love the little bear. You're not too far from me, Marie. Love to know what you've been making, by the way. What projects have you got on the go? I'm coming back to you. So what have you been sewing? Um, what requests do you have? What would you like to see more of? What's your 2019 sewing, I was going to say resolution, revolutions, but resolutions. Is it to sew more, sew less? Try something a little bit more complicated maybe? A new technique, maybe you want to try quilting when you're normally a dressmaker. Love to hear from you. I must finish this bit. Fill the gaps in later. Okay, it's not looking too bad actually, considering I'm rushing it. So let's one more stitch at the top here. Then I'm going to go down to the bottom of the nose and whoops, do a running stitch. doesn't have to be through both layers this one it's it's not going to be holding the whole thing together shouldn't really have your embroidery thread too long because it get, gets knotted so I thought I'd have mine too long and show you what happens there we go I quite like it when the stitches aren't perfectly even as well looks a little bit more handmade I think and then we come down to the mouth. And he's just going to have French knots fries. I'll do those in a second. So around here, I'm going to... One more stitch. Nice big smile. I'm going to come back and fill in the gaps on the stitches here. So I've got a straight line. Oh, and I've got some more questions. So I'll answer those as I'm sewing. Oh, right, Carol says, if you're in between dress pattern sizes, which one do you go with? Nearest bust, waist, or hip size? So, I'm coming back again. Uh, Carol in Newbury, that is. Measure yourself and go by your measurements, not by your dress size. So ignore dress sizes when you come into dress patterns. If you're going for a bust size, go for your upper bust size, not for your full bust size. Because if you go for a bigger bust size, if you've got a big bust and you go by that size, your shoulders are going to be too big and your neck's going to be gaping. So go for this size, then you need to do a full bust adjustment to adjust the size of the bust. That's going to be covered in a couple of months' time here. Um, for hips, m measure your hips and go for your hip size. So if the waist on a skirt supposedly is, uh, isn't the same as the waist measurement, maybe you're smaller or maybe you're bigger, still go by the hip size because it's a lot easier to adjust a waist smaller than it is to make hips bigger. So if you were to buy a pattern and go by the, the waist size and your hips don't fit, that's a difficult adjustment. So always go by your hip size and, and shrink that in. Hope that helps. Got some more. Just carry on doing this while I'm, I'm talking to you. Um, right, this is... Oh, I haven't got a name. 
Uh, whoever it is says, hope you had the best Christmas with your family. And my question is, when doing squares, quilt squares, is are there any tips for making sure it's all lined up properly and even? So when I appear to line them up perfectly, they always come up slightly off. Now, I've done a bit of research here for you. Um, because my I, I, I always pin and I'll stick a pin straight through the seam. And I thought, well, maybe other people that are maybe more experienced than I am, or you've got your own tips, um, would have a different way of doing it. So I did put a post on my design team's Facebook page just saying, what do you all do? Because they're all excellent quilters on my team. And they all came back and said they pin. So put a pin straight through the seam where they join um, and hold that in place. So where your points are joining together, just pin straight into there. So that's the, that's the best advice we can come up with for that one. Right, that'll do for that. French knots. I'm going to put some more thread in, so I'll come back again. And we'll see who else is here while I'm back. Uh, Alison. <laughs> Alison's New Year's resolution is to give up housekeeping for sewing. I think we're all with you on that one. Um, just finished a bag. Oh, lovely, Margaret. I'm glad you like it. Computer shut down, but you're back. Lovely. Oh, Alan. Alan emailed me on her chanda where I've been gone from for over two years saying that he had a problem with a v-neck and it was when I was there with Trish and um, we tried to sort it out and we told him gave him some advice on to what we thought we could we could do and then he came back in the next show we were there and he said no I still can't do it so my best suggestion was to go for a round neck. So it looks like you said, Alan, give up. <laughs> it's not going to happen. Buy a T-shirt. <laughs> now you'll get there. You keep trying and you'll get there. Probably will um, Poor Alan. Who else have we got? That's it for now, lovely. It, it, it's odd. You, you can see Alan's questions on, on Facebook. If anybody's got any advice for him, bless him, then, uh, then come and let him know what to do. French knots is what I say. So I'm coming through from the back of the eye and I want to make a big knot. So I'm going to do one stitch about an eighth of an inch long and come back out again and then I'm wrapping this thread round one two three four five six times so I've got a big knot as I pull it through and I'm leaving it quite loose so there's a lot of thread there then back just to one side of the knot over to the other eye And do the same again. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm back in just to the side again, and that's it. Um, and again, you could use buttons instead if you wanted bigger eyes. If you have a little bit of white embroidery thread, you could do an outline or a highlight in the centre of the eye, it would look quite nice. But there we go, that's how he's looking at the moment. I'll stitch around him shortly. But one little touch I like to do is this. Because I just think it brings him to life. Look, he's all embarrassed because it's his birthday and everybody's looking at him. Oh, it's a her, isn't it? We're going to do a her. I've got a bit of lipstick on there. We'll do eyelashes later, but this one can have a little bit of lipstick there. <laughs> oh, birthday bear, look, I'm making you a birthday girlfriend. How's that? Nose is a bit crooked, but, you know, I'll, I'll sort that out and you'll, um, 
you'll see that better on the blog. Um, okay, let's come back again. Another question here for you. Uh, this is Sharon, and she said, um, with the quilt we're making, this is the um, the block of the month behind me. Uh, she says, for the single bed size, please can you tell me how much you'd need for a double quilt if possible? I shall answer you that, um, Sharon, on Facebook because I need to work it out. So I just thought I'd, I wanted you to know that I'm, I, have, I have got your email and we will be working on it. So I, sh I shall let you know about that one. See you again then. So again, members, um, I've got to go. There's somebody at the door. Um, let me have any questions and comments. Um, keep your pictures coming in as well. We're building quite a library now on the website because uh, it's lovely to see what you're doing as well. Um, love to see pictures of birthday bear. Maybe you're going to make a whole family of birthday bears all in different sizes. Make a huge one. That would be fantastic. I'd love to see that. And I'll see you again next month. So enjoy making your projects so far. Don't forget, if you are joining right now for the very first time, you've got 26 to get through. So we're going to keep you very busy for the next few months. I'll see you again in February. Bye-bye.